So which ETF is better, JEPB or SCHD? Let's figure that out together. And watch until the very end because there I'll give you an example of how much you need to invest in each ETF in order to retire with $50,000 a year in dividend income. First, JEPB is a baby compared to SCHD. I mean, really, it was literally born on May 20th of 2020. So as of today, JEPB is less than three years old. On the other hand, SCHD is kind of like an older cousin because it's a little over 11 years old. Because of that, there's not much history behind JEPB. On the other hand, SCHD has quite a bit of history. Here on the left, you see the expense ratio of SCHD is 0.06% and JEPB is 0.35%. So you're paying JEPB's management team about six times as much as SCHD's. Now later, you'll see why the expense ratio is higher for JEPB. But to give you a sneak peek into the future, let's just say that the higher management fee is because JetBee's management team, well, they have to do a lot more work than SCHD's. Now here's where things start to get interesting. Notice on the left that SCHD's dividend yield is at 3.38%. On the right, you see that JetBee's dividend yield is 11.3%. That means that if you own JetBee, you're getting paid over three times as much in dividends as if you had that same money invested in SCHD. However, when we look at the three-year dividend growth rate, we see that SCHD has an average growth rate of 14.1%. Looking at JetBee's three-year growth rate, we see that it's a big goose egg because it's not even three years old yet. Also, notice here under consecutive years of dividend growth that SCHD has grown its dividend for 10 consecutive years. JetBee has only grown it for one year. One reason why JetBee's dividend will have a difficult time growing long term is because of the way the ETF is designed. And that's an important factor because if you're looking for an ETF that typically grows its dividend, JetBee is probably not the ETF for you because its dividend is going to fluctuate as you'll see in a minute. However, SCHD has the goal of hopefully giving you a portfolio that consistently grows its dividends each year. In fact, it has done that for 10 years in a row. However, here's another reason why some people really like JetBee. Notice at the bottom right here that JetBee pays its dividends monthly, whereas SCHD, it pays them quarterly. So if you're trying to live off the dividends of these two ETFs, I think we'd all agree that we'd much rather get paid monthly as compared to being forced to wait until the end of three months to receive the dividends from SCHD. If you're concerned with there being sufficient trading volume, you see that both SCHD and JetBee have trading volume over 3.3 million shares a day. So both of them have plenty of trading volume. Notice that they both have about the same number of holdings. SCHD has 103 different companies and JetBee has 129. However, SCHD's top holdings make up over 40% of this ETF. On the other hand, JetBee is not quite as concentrated because its top 10 holdings only amount to 16% of its overall portfolio. Here are each ETF's top 10 holdings. Notice on the left, the SCHD has a concentration of around 4% for each of its top 10 holdings. While it's on the right, JetV is a lot less concentrated. In its top 10 positions, only one of them is over 2% of its portfolio. Everything else is around 1.5% of the overall portfolio. Notice that of this top 10, the two ETFs only share two stocks in common, that being Coca-Cola and Pepsi. But overall, their percentages in most sectors, it isn't too far off. Here you see that SCHD has about 5% more of its portfolio in financials. Industrials are both pretty close at 16%. However, one big difference is that almost 16% of SCHD's holdings are technology, whereas JetBee only has about 9% of its portfolio in technology stocks. And that makes sense because one of JetBee's goals is to create a less volatile portfolio. We see the consumer defensive is pretty much the same at around 14%. But the next big sector that's quite a bit different is utilities. Here you see that SCHD, it only has a tiny fraction of its holdings that are utilities, whereas JetBee has almost 10% of its holdings in the utility sector. Again, that goes back to the more stable portfolio that JetBee managers are trying to create. And then one sector that's noticeably missing from SCHD is real estate. It doesn't own any real estate, whereas JetBee has a little over 3% of its portfolio in real estate. Now let's get a brief overview of exactly what the goal is of each one of these ETFs. Because although I like both of them, their main goals are very different. Simply put, the companies in SCHD have dependable dividends, have paid those dividends for at least 10 years, the companies are of sufficient size, and they are actively traded companies. 
The ETF then ensures that each company has a strong balance sheet, good profitability, and a strong starting dividend yield. SCHC's goal is to own companies that have a fairly high starting dividend and that should pay those dividends forever and actually increase those dividends each year. Now let's look at JetB because it's quite a bit different than SCHD. JetB is an actively managed income ETF. For its foundation, it uses primarily companies found in the S&P 500. However, here's the part where the high dividend yield comes in and where it can get a little more complicated, but I'm going to make it very simple for you. JetB also uses what's called equity linked notes or ELNs, and they sell call options against the S&P 500 index. If you watch my channel, you're very familiar with what covered calls are. We sell a whole bunch of them and generate awesome cash flow every month by doing so. However, you may not be familiar with what ELNs are. Here's a simple example that'll help you to understand what an ELN is. A simple ELN might be structured as follows. Let's say that you had $1,000 you wanted to invest but you want to make sure that you would not lose that $1,000. No matter what happens with your investment, you want $1,000 to come back to you at the end of, say, a five-year period. Well, you could do an ELN by taking 800 of the $1,000 and buying a five-year bond that pays a 4.5% yield to maturity. With that bond, you're guaranteed to get that $1,000 back at the end of five years. The remaining 200 of your initial $1,000 investment could then be used to buy call options, say for example in the S&P 500, over that five-year time frame. Since there's a chance that the call options might expire worthless, at the end of that five years, you might only get back your $1,000, but at least you got back the $1,000. However, if the S&P were to go up, the value of those call options might also go up, resulting in a return in excess of just the $1,000 bond and the $1,000 you initially invested. That's basically what an ELN does. It guarantees that the capital you put into it will be returned, but it also gives the investor the opportunity for some additional gains. Because JetB derives a good portion of its income from selling covered calls, as you can see here, its monthly and yearly dividend amount, it will fluctuate. In highly volatile environments like the past 12 months, those call options will pay more, but in a lower volatility environment, those call options will pay less. Now comparing JetB's dividends to SCHD, here you see that SCHD's dividends have consistently gone up on a yearly basis over the past 11 years. Here you see the total return, which includes dividends and stock price appreciation of JetB in blue versus SCHD in orange. As you can see, over the past two and a half years, SCHD has outperformed JetB in total return. And that makes sense because one of SCHD's goals is to have a portfolio that not only goes up in value, but that also has a growing dividend. On the other hand, JetBee's main goal is to have a portfolio that grows in value, but more importantly, pays a high monthly income. Since JetBee sells options, it makes sense that it most likely would have lower volatility because that higher monthly income, it smooths out the losses when the market's going down. And we see that's the case here because over the past two and a half years, JetBee's largest drawdown is 13.71%, whereas SCHD's is at 16.85%. Before I get to the example portfolio of how much you would need in each one of these ETFs to generate $50,000 a year in annual dividends, here are the key points for each of them. With SCHD, you're investing in high quality, fundamentally sound, disciplined, dividend paying stocks. You should experience not only portfolio growth, but also dividend growth over the long run. However, your starting dividend yield is 70% lower than what it would be if you invested that same money in JetBee. With JetBee, you're going to get a higher starting dividend yield, but you're going to have limited dividend and portfolio growth. As a result, in a market rally, JetBee will most likely underperform SCHD. However, in a market decline, JetBee will most likely outperform SCHD and the overall market. Since JetBee sells call options, you're capping your upside, whereas with SCHD, there are no call options being sold. So your upside is unlimited based on the performance of the underlying stocks. So basically, with JetBee, you're getting a high yield and lower volatility, but it's not free. You're paying for that by giving up some future gains. So which ETF is better? If you're close to or at retirement, and you want the highest possible income right now, and you aren't too concerned with dividend or portfolio growth, then JetBee might be the way to go. However, if you have time and are more interested in not only the value of your portfolio growing, but also experiencing strong dividend growth, 
then SCHD might be the way to go. Or if you're in the in-between phase, in which you're fairly close to retirement, but also want some dividend in portfolio value growth, you might consider a combination of the two. Here's an example portfolio of just Jeffy and how much you would need to own in order to generate, as you see at the bottom right corner, $50,000 a year in annual dividends. Notice at the purple arrow that you would need to own 7,860 shares of Jeffy at its current price of $54.12 per share. That would equate to a portfolio of $426,000. But remember, although you get that high starting dividend, you really shouldn't expect a whole lot of dividend or portfolio growth. Now, if you went with just SCHD, here's an example portfolio of how much SCHD you would need to own to pocket, as you can see in the bottom right corner, $50,000 a year in annual dividends. In order to do that, as of today, you would need to own $1,469,000 worth of SCHD or right at 19,500 shares. Now that's a very large number. But remember, you can build or grow these portfolios over time. And also with SCHD here, this is a portfolio that should grow in value on its own and it should also grow your yearly dividend income. And finally, here's a combined portfolio made up of 50% Jeffy and 50% SCHD. If you're trying to own enough stock to get $50,000 a year in dividend income, you need to own $662,000 worth of these two combined stocks. Of course, the majority of the income, it come from Jeffy. But since the other half of your portfolio is SCHD, you would also get the benefit of portfolio and dividend growth. What I showed you here with these two ETFs is very similar to what we do on this channel and in my Patreon group. We sell a lot of options to generate consistent monthly income. We then take some of that option income premium and buy high quality stocks that pay nice starting dividends, but also have the potential for dividend growth. By trading in options like we do, it's very possible to realize your retirement goal a lot sooner than you thought possible. If you'd like to get an alert as soon as we buy stocks and sell options, check out the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. If you'd like to see how much option traders can make every month by trading options and collecting dividends, check out the video at the link above in the description below entitled Option Trading Monthly Cash Flows. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.